Is that too, that's too close? Oh, okay. Is that a bit? Yeah, okay. Hey folks, welcome to part two of the Luthier's Lair series detailing the refurbishment, restoration and eventual base-like object appearing out of the gas base fossil, which is now called Bessie. Yes, it's gas base Bessie. No, it's gas base Falcon series one, original prototype. And uh, let's see what we're going to get up to next, shall we? Because, you know what? I recorded so much footage of this whole build, and I'm done with it, by the way, that I can't remember where I am. So let's go and have <laughs> Let's go and see where I am, okay? Okay. Yeah, so I just um, took all the, shield, the old shielding off, and I noticed... This is kind of unlike me. This wood is not sealed. A little damage in there, which I'm going to putty in. And it's not sealed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of coats of sand and sealer on that. Uh, Water-based crystal lac sand and sealer. There's been no moisture absorption because I was very careful when I was uh, wet sanding this. Some people like to dry sand. I've found that... Uh, it can be a very expensive to dry sand, or if if you know you have to get really high grade um, sandpaper uh, to be able to dry sand a guitar and keep going because you know the clear coat will pill up inside the sandpaper and you have to keep brushing it off and it takes a long time. So I do wet sand and I do wet sand with uh, water and a little bit of uh, detergent in there to make it. A bit more slippery and the paper doesn't clog up the downside is though that you'll get if you're not careful you get moisture in inside all the holes that you've drilled out for the body and stuff like that and that can cause swelling and then your clear coat cracks and all that stuff so you have to be careful but yeah this just needs a couple of coats of sand and sealer I think and I'll let that dry and I don't need to finish it I'll just let it absorb into the wood it'll be nice we'll seal off that wood I'm going to make sure it's bone dry I'll use the air gun on it for a little bit of course I'll cover off the rest of the guitar so I'm not air gunning heat gunning the, uh, the finish <laughs> that would be bad so uh, yeah that's what we'll go and do I can see drill marks from where I came through here. Man, times are a-changing. Cool. Okay, let's go to it. Well, yes. Cozy blanky, cozy blanky on the guitar. I just air gunned it, heat gunned it, heat gunned the crap out of it. It's bone dry. Let it sit for about an hour. Absolutely dry now. And I'm just going to plop some sand and sealer in there. Always better to be safe than sorry. Alright. Now, I don't need to be careful with this. Really. Uh, well, I need to be careful that I don't get it on the finish. I sh and in truth, I should have done this uh, before doing the finish. But, you know. Didn't know what to expect really with this guitar. It was a long time ago when I made this body, 12 years ago. And of course, I'd kind of forgotten what I'd done in there. So using a sponge brush, I'm going to put some sand and sealer in there. And I'm using Crystal Lac water-based sand and sealer. Water base, you say? Yes. Doesn't swell. It's amazing stuff. It's good stuff. Use this stuff all the time. For my sanding sealing purposes. You can use other things like shellac and stuff like that, but this gets the job done. Pretty good. And I'm gonna just plop a little more in there. And let that absorb into the wood. It'll settle pretty evenly this stuff. 
and if I'm satisfied after half an hour waiting for this to dry I'll go ahead and reshield the cavity if I'm not, well then I'll put another coat on and I'll continue to do so until I am satisfied with it there we go ok, so that's that I'll go and wash this in water because it's water based awesome reuse my sponge brush and uh, we'll see what transpires shall we? Ah, brilliant Yes, so I stripped out the old um, shielding, in this cavity anyway, uh, I sealed the wood and I put new shielding in, lovely, swimming pool, mm. and of course the pickup cavities are shielded as well, now it's just time to um, install the electronics, but like a dolt, it being an old body, I've still got to clean up the back. I forgot to drill holes for the battery boxes <laughs> through to the cavity. <laughs> anyway, I'll do that, that's okay. It's kind of relic anyway, but there's a safe way to do this. What you do is you put a cloth each side drilled through with a long drill bit you know and you're fine you won't get any marks at all on the finish if you're careful and then uh, we'll go from there it's looking good so far Bessie mmm Bessie hi Bessie hello Bessie <laughs> yes so jumping far ahead I've uh, fitted some of the hardware, the neck, and I put this uh, little, I've called it a slap guard. I think somebody else has invented that, but it's a good idea, because if you slap a lot, you'll scuff up the finish. But, you know, it's a relic base anyway, so who cares, basically. And... Um, I was debating whether to make this jet black, polished like the body, or just leave this dark grey uh, tortoise shell uh, pattern on it. And I decided to leave it this, you know, because it gives some contrast and it gives some sort of unique taste to the base. Um, you know, I'm testing out the LEDs there, making sure the bridge is central, all that stuff. I've got Slim line, uh, dual coil, soap bar pickups in there. You see, it's dual coil. You can tell by the wiring, you know, standard wiring. Thank you very much, Seymour Duncan. And um, yeah, and here's the control plate which will go there. Oh, 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 flicker. Better watch. Yeah, can't do that too often. Let's just uh, take that out, actually. Let's test them again. Yep, yeah, it's fine. Let's take that out. And that will go in there. You know, at some point. And uh, that will be jet black. So, it gives a good contrast. This model originally had the uh, sort of tunomatic style bridge. And I'm leaving these in. You can see they can come out if you want them to come out. But I'm leaving them in just as a vestige, a remnant of of what the, the base was. I think that's pretty cool. They serve no useful purpose anymore. Because I've got the high mass bridge in. But, you know, looks kind of tarty. Looks kind of tarty. And uh, we'll go from there. The next thing is uh, just getting the electronics done. And uh, actually, uh, I might put the tuning heads in first just to check everything's straight. Because it is an old body. And it's in. Well, it's not quite an old neck. This neck's about three or four years old, refurbished. 
and looks splendiferous. So, let's have at it. Yes, here we are already with the uh, gas based falcon fossil, aka Bessie. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> the electronics are done. Now, as usual, as regular viewers will know, it's test time. Yes, so here's the output jack there. We will plug in the output jack. We will switch on crap base amp. And of course, it's not completely grounded yet, so I'm going to get a little bit of noise. Not too much though. The volume is up to 7 out of 10, of course. I'm setting the pickup blend uh, knob to the middle, so I've got both pickups active. I've turned the volume up, the bass up, the middle to the middle, and the treble all the way up, because you get the most amount of noise out of treble. Okay. So I can tell immediately the noise is acceptable right now, because it's not grounded yet. It will be once it's buttoned up. So, let's tap the pickups. Back pickup only. Front pickup only. Sorry, I should say neck and bridge. I, I swap between them all the time. Neck pickup, no bridge pickup. So it's all working. Let's turn all that down. Yeah, get that muted sound. You hear there's a lot of noise there. Yeah, everything working fine. And series parallel. Should get a lot more noise in series right now, since it's not grounded yet. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's all working. Okay, now the LEDs. Three, two, one. Oh, thank God for that. And the brightness works as well. Yeah, dim and bright. Fantastic. Everything works. Yes. Let's get it buttoned up. And the next thing we'll be doing is installing the tuning heads on the headstock because they're not installed yet. Awesome. <sighs> That's it for part two. Yes, indeed. Join me next time for part three, if there is one. Uh, because, like I said at the start here, I don't know where I am because uh, I've already recorded everything. And I've got a bunch of files on my main computer upstairs and I don't know what they are. So, till part three, if there is one, stay safe, <laughs> be good, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.